Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening everyone to the channel IT Simplified. I hope you find these videos on Azure useful and subscribing to the channel. This session is part two in the series. So this is the final part uh, which I've made for Azure File Sync. So if you remember in the last video, I explained under what case scenario you can use Azure File Sync. And we also talked about uh, what are the pricing uh, will be in case you want to implement this in your organization. In today's session, I will show you how to configure that. So we'll be doing configuration end to end from Azure portal and also by going on to the uh, file server, which is the endpoint in this case. So let's start. I am on my Azure subscription. The first thing you want to do is to create a storage account. So from your portal, you can go and search for storage account. I have already pinned this under the favorite. Let's go and click on add. Deploy this in the resource group. Give the name for the storage account. Limit IT Simplify Storage Account. You can choose a performance tier, standard or premium. Standard is your regular magnetic drive. Premium is the solid state. Uh, we'll keep general purpose version two. That's the latest account type uh, from Microsoft. And for replication, feel free to whatever uh, redundancy you want. In my case, I'll pick LRS or locally redundant and access tier I'll keep it hot go to next you can also enable the security which is already there by default so data is encrypted you can also specify from which virtual networks you want this to access but I'll leave that to the default right now review and create and click on the create button Let's go and expand storage account. Because we are talking about um, files and share, uh, storage account has different services. So in this case, we'll be talking about file storage. We need to create a file share here where the data will be synced. So you need to give a name for the file share. I'll name it cloud share. You can specify the quota. Uh, you don't if you want you can give a limit over here but uh, in case you don't it will take the default which is 5 terabyte but uh, you don't need to worry because you'll be paying only for the amount consumed not for this quota but uh, uh, that's also possible if you want to specify that so with this step done the second thing is that uh, we need to create a storage sync account as well as uh, download the Azure file sync agent for that Let's go to create a resource and search for Azure File Sync. That's the service we want. You get a brief summary of what it is. Click on Create. Again, we'll deploy this under the resource group. You need to give the name for the sync. Pick the region, review and create, and click on the create button. The storage sync service was created. And uh, if you want, you can pin this right under the favorite by going to do all service. So I will expand storage sync service. And here it is, which has appeared. So let me go and expand this. And here, If I go under the sync group, we need to create a sync group name in this case. So let's name it uh, and uh, pick your subscription and here you need to specify the storage account the one that we just created so one that we have is ITSSA so pick that and uh, 
also specify the file share in our case it is cloud share and click on the create button clone endpoint created successfully let's go and expand this so here it is our cloud point has appeared here the second thing that we have to do is to add the server endpoint which includes downloading the uh, agent or the azure file agent so let's go and expand add server endpoint here you see that uh, I don't have any registered server. The reason being that I have not downloaded the sync agent. So what I'm going to do is I will go and uh, download that agent. So let me just expand and search for Azure File Sync agent, which is right over here. And I will click on download depending upon which server that we are talking about. In my case, it is uh, server 2019. You will pick that file. Go to next. And uh, it has appeared and let's run the file. Accept the licensing agreement. We'll use all these default uh, location for the uh, deployment of the file. Keep on going. Yes, I want to have updates. And uh, I will also check automatically update when the new version becomes available. And let me just have this installation on this uh, machine. And by the time it is getting installed, if I can expand my file explorer, you can see that I have a drive with the name S here and I have uh, some data. So I want to make sure that that gets synced with my uh, uh, cloud share, the one that I have just created in the storage account. So I have the drive with the name S and I have data with the name test here. And in that we have a couple of folders which we're going to test in a moment. was installed successfully so let me just close this and the agent is up to date so let's go and click on OK and uh, let me go back to the Azure portal so let me try to add the server endpoint now and uh, it has still not appeared so let me just wait for a sec Okay, so we what still need to register this server. So you'll get this uh, uh, this wizard over here. So it is asking me the Azure environment. So you have to sign it to authenticate that. Yes, uh, that's the subscription that we are using. So let me just log in with my Azure credentials. I need to pick my Azure subscription.
the resource group name is ITSRG and the storage sync service is the one that we just created and let's try to register this Okay, so the registration was successful. So let me just say OK. And now if I go inside my sync group, hopefully my file server will appear over here. So here it is. So name of my server is ITSFS. Actually, let me show you. That is what my file server is that we are trying to uh, link with. Right. So let me just go and select that. And as I said that uh, uh, the uh, drive that I want to uh, sync is the S drive. So let me give the path and the name of the folder in that was test. If you want, you can enable cloud tiering, which I explained in my uh, last session. You can set uh, how many percentage of uh, free space you want on that volume. Uh, whether you select the cloud tiering or not, the data will be synced. The only advantage of its, uh, of this uh, tiering is that the data which is not accessed frequently will be moved to the uh, cloud uh, uh, share, the one that we just created. And as the users, they are accessing that, it will be cached. So from the user perspective, you will see everything still there on the file server, but it will be cached. So it's basically deciding between what is the hot data, the data which is uh, accessed frequently, and the one which is not that frequent and that will be cached. So what I'm gonna do is just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna uh, disable that. And if you want, if you have a lot of data, if you have data in terabytes, you don't wanna send it over the internet. So what you can do is you can also have offline data transfer in which uh, Azure has a service with the name data box, which will ship that to you and uh, you can uh, put the data and you can sync it to the uh, nearest uh, data center of your area. But uh, I'll keep it disabled right now. Click on the create button. But all these functionalities are there. So our server endpoint has appeared over here and the health as you can see is provisioning. And once all the data has appeared it will show in healthy state so let me actually go to the storage account and uh, expand the file share and we should see that uh, this will grow so i should see whatever we have in our test folder on prem so right now uh, it is still appearing so just let's wait for a moment Let me go to the storage sync service and uh, expand the sync group. It is pending. So let me give a, a minute or so because I don't have that much data. So it should not take that long to sync with the cloud share. Uh, just uh, a point over here in case you want to, to configure the firewall and virtual network you can also specify over here so you can specify from which networks you want to give access so it's all configurable under the storage account and which our file share is residing so that's that's also possible
So here you can see that though it's still pending, uh, our data has started appearing in the uh, cloud share. And as I said in my previous session, uh, you can use this in a DR kind of scenario in case the whole file server goes down. Your data is still there. You can uh, you can sync it back to on-prem, change the direction, and uh, you just need to spin up a server and all the data will be back onto that file server. And I think it's a great uh, functionality from the storage perspective, from the DR perspective, and also the cloud tiering uh, perspective too, uh, because as I said that when we talk about these production server in enterprise, storage is a lot of money. And uh, this is a great way of uh, uh, saving those on those uh, parts. So with this, we have successfully configured the Azure File Sync by using the Azure File Sync services in Azure. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.